Well, I want to get uh, right to this end of the year rally attempt we've got going on right now. Of course, wouldn't offset the losses of December, which are the worst since 1930s, so maybe 1931. But it is a positive sign, in fact, for the entire last few trading sessions going into 2019. Bringing in Kelly & Co. Managing Partner Kevin Kelly, Kingsview Asset Management's Chief Investment Officer and Fox Business contributor Scott Martin. Martin, let me start with you, Kevin. You know, I, I, unlike last week uh, after Christmas, some pretty uh, amazing sessions. You know, listen, we set a record point day. We had one of the best intraday reversals ever, and there was some pretty fair buying on Friday. Picking it up again today. Now, I know it's influenced by light. You know, not everyone is around, but you know, there were a couple of times, even in those days, where we were breaking down again and we didn't collapse. Yeah, it was pretty interesting to note because we almost. Uh, hit a bear market, right? So we were just at 19.8% down, which would have been a full correction. But it's pretty interesting to note that you're starting to see that steady hands are coming through. What valuations are necessary for next year? Should we trade it to 17 PE? Should we trade it to 15 PE? So I think later this week, we're going to get better indications. We're going to get that data that we need, such as the purchasing managers index on Thursday. Isn't it interesting, though, Kevin, that uh, at earlier in the year, we were saying, OK, maybe a 20 PE, 21 PE, 22 yeah. PE. And, you know, so the, the dynamics have certainly changed a lot. Yeah, there, there's certainly shifting dynamics. But one of the dynamics that has remained resilient throughout this entire year has been the consumer. This has always been a business climate situation where we're talking about the stronger dollar that certainly lent headwinds into uh, the latter half of this year, as well as you started to see what can happen in the European economies, how will that impact business with Italy, with Brexit. So the consumer is remaining strong, and I think that's why you're getting an underlying bid here, because we saw holiday, holiday sales do exceptionally well, and we're starting to see the banks come out with issuances for next year on their top picks. A lot of them are retail names. I want to also bring a lot of Al's uh, advisor, managing partner, Jason Rothman. Uh, Jason, uh, I, 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 you sounded, I think last time you and I spoke, to sound, you sound a little bit more optimistic, like you were trying to get position for some sort of rebound in 2019. Is that what you're expecting? I am, you know, and, and I know I didn't mention this earlier, but, you know, one name that comes to mind, which uh, kind of is, is a symbol, in a sense, for what I think is going to happen next year, is a stock like Alibaba. You and I have mentioned that before, Charles. Alibaba is, was almost cut in half. This is a company that did $30 billion in sales in one day. I think Mr. Market is too depressed right now, and we will bounce back. Uh, technically, what to speak of fundamentally, I really do believe that you know, big funds will look at Q1 as, as a great opportunity to buy cheap. You know, Scott, of course, you, last time you and I spoke, I saw you made some shifts. You went into gold a little bit. Uh, a little bit. You became more defensive. I, I think that's sort of the nature of the market right now. Defense, even if you're in, you know, caution. Is that where you are right now? Yeah, we, we are, Charles. And I would say more defensive with respect to volatility. I mean, I think you're, you're going to get some good bang for your buck out of the S&P going forward, which, by the way, I love the comments, you guys, you and KK. That's Kevin Kelly, by the way, friends, if you're playing at home, um, about valuation. Because that's really where the crux of the markets are right now. Because you're right. Like, if you look at, say, 15x on the S&P at, what, 170 bucks in earnings maybe for 2019? We're about that fair value. And then if we have an expanding economy still, which I think we will, maybe a resurgence, resurgence in economic growth, a more dovish Fed next year, you've probably got a reason to put a higher multiple on that earnings number. So to me, yes, Charles, we still believe in gold here because it's been the less volatile trade. It's helped mitigate some of these S&P losses. But if you're a long-term investor here and do believe in that earnings story I just reiterated, I think you've got a good pick here on, on some S&P stocks here. Well, give us uh, some names that uh, maybe at the near the top of your buy list. Yeah, so kind of along the line of what Jason said, we do like Alibaba as well because of that destruction in price and the fact that the market just overblew that one. But how about industrials? I mean, this China trade deal uh, is getting going to get worked out. Now, whether it gets worked out in January, February, or March, or even April is anybody's guess. But the reality is the industrial stocks have been thrown out with the baby in the bathwater. So, I mean, look at 3M, look at Caterpillar, look at Deer. Those have started to outperform the S&P in the last 30, 30 days. So I believe those are areas where you can start picking up some value. And don't forget, too, I mean, energy looks like it, it looks like it's bottoming every week. I get that. But the reality is, too, is energy seems like a good place here. Maybe Maybe Duke Energy, EOG Resources are two names to take a look at as we put those in our portfolios recently. You know, uh, Kevin, uh, you mentioned the PMI number. Uh, some of these regional Fed reports have not been great uh, recently. 
uh, today Dallas Fed. Now, we know that's impacted yeah. to a degree by oil, but it, that hasn't been the only one. Uh, you know, one of the things I think maybe that's gotten overlooked by the headlines are, 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 are could there be some things wrong? With, you know, the, the, we know that it's what you would call the unknown unknowns, right? What, what could be out there that's gnawing at this market that's not making the headlines necessarily? Like, why would Goldman Sachs be down 37 uh, percent? You know, why are now some of these Federal Reserve, uh, some of these regional manufacturing numbers really starting to feel like they're starting to fall apart? Here? Yeah, I think you're bringing up an interesting point on some of the, the hard data that we're seeing, and it's, it's weaker. But I think one of the reasons why it's weaker is the seasonality effect. We have had some storms come in. Uh, people have delayed purchases because of that, also because of the seasonably weak Q1 number. I think we are not going to get a, a good Q1 GDP number, and that's traditionally been the case, right? So we don't know what this winter is going to bring. So you, I think you've seen a lot of reduction in spending because of that. And there was also that buildup effect. You had a lot of uh, manufacturers go out and purchase items before tariffs took place. You also had them do a lot of spending in the summer, and then they wanted to see how it shook out right. over the second half of the year. So I think that's the reason why we had such strong numbers that you, first of all, can't beat that comp. Second of all, they wanted to see how the economy was going to play out from that. You know, uh, it's interesting because, uh, Jason, Kevin brings up the point I think it was Goldman just came out and they lowered their um, their GDP for next year. And they're really concerned about the first half. There are a lot of question marks. And I think the market's dealing with that. We know we have to get adjusted to slower growth. For me, though, the operative word is growth. Not necessarily slower. We will still grow on top of an amazing earnings period this year. How does an investor in your mind adjust for all of this? Well, first of all, that could just mean that Goldman wants to buy in Q1, <laughs> right? And uh, I think, you know, some, a, a lot of smart money knows huh? that. Uh, <laughs> second of all, um, you know, and I love actually Kevin's comment that, that of, of the seasonality uh, effect. I would even add to it. I, you know, I think everybody has to remember that all, all price is driven by uh, emotion, right? We don't live in a completely robotic world yet, and I hope we never do, but that's a different conversation. It's all emotion. So I think when you have more fear, more uncertainty come into play, you start to see some temporary contractions. And as some confidence starts to build again, again, the whole steady hand comment, I totally agree with. We are very low. You will see, you will see the housing market start to come back. You'll see the manufacturing numbers start to come back because I think the market is anticipating a maximum of one rate hike uh, next year. It's going to be volatile, so it's going to be a great trading environment as well. You know, Scott, of course, one thing that uh, it's so interesting is we always, the oldest axiom on Wall Street is buy low, sell high. And every time it gets low, and I, and I bring on the guests and we talk about it, no one wants to buy when it's low. You know, a lot of people want to see it get back to the high. Like, you know, once we get to a double top, I'm in. <laughs> I, it seems like, you know, when you look back at this period, whether it's a month from now or a year from now, that we're going to say, golly, there were some amazing opportunities out there. And, 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 and that's what I think the audience grapples with more than anything else, uh, is that it, when the, and when the experts don't have that sort of confidence, Maybe that's when they don't have confidence. And, of course, maybe sometimes the experts don't have confidence for a reason, Jason. That's a good segment we'll do later on, what really motivates right. Goldman's calls. But right now, the idea that, uh, that a lot of people really, those who manage money for a living, still seem to be a little bit confused. Scott? Yeah, I agree, Charles. And maybe it's that FOMO trade, too. You know, when the markets are going up and it just feels like everybody, including you know, your neighbor and your cleaning lady, if you have one, or making money, you got to get, got to chase it. And, and frankly, to your point, I mean, how nasty was Christmas Eve? I mean, that, that puke bottom that we had on Christmas Eve when it tried to ruin everybody's Christmas, I mean, that was the time that everybody was selling, it seemed like, or at least a retail investor was. So those are the times you really got to swallow it and really fade that, that thought and get in. But you're right, Charles, you know, this is to the point of sentiment here, where it's one of those things where when things feel really bad, when they look really, right. really bad, as you and Jason and Kevin have pointed out, when some of that bad news already comes out and the market already knows it that's when you got to run with the market and figure out that better days are ahead although i will say you know the retail investor gets i think sometimes a, a bad rub last week was the first time in six weeks that they actually put money into the market as it was bottoming maybe they know something that goldman doesn't hey kevin scott jason thank you all very much appreciate it thank you very much